Dear friends, all of a sudden, all hell seems to be breaking loose everywhere at the same time. In my case, and in Gaza, and now in Lebanon, too. At first glance, it looks or seems like the very evil forces have now definitely gained the upper hand, but only at first glance. Remember what they say, don't judge a book by its cover. If you want to know what's really going on, you cannot just look at the cover. This is not only true for a book, but this is even more true for all the covers that the mainstream media and the politicians hide the truth behind. Remember Corona and remember the secret panic papers detailing how best to spread panic among the population to make the people go along with the lockdowns and eventually even the shots. Remember what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said shortly before he was murdered in a concentration camp. Our problem is not so much individual evil people, but it's really stupidity. The stupidity of the dumbed down masses that we need to deal with and focus on. And remember what philosopher Immanuel Kant, one of the leading figures of the Enlightenment said, it is cowardice that keeps the people stupid and docile as they dare not use their own reasoning to decide what's good and what's evil, what's right and what's wrong. Sapor aude, he said, dare use your own reasoning. So how do we understand what's really going on right now? Well, by looking beyond the cover, by taking a closer look at what's behind the cover. And the closer look at the official narrative that is presented to us by the mainstream media and politicians shows us that in reality the other side is now definitely at the end of its rope. They are no longer able to, behind, to, to hide their crimes and themselves behind nice sounding, soothing boilerplate language. They're forced to drop their masks. The mass fraud by their banks and mass murder through their wars are the cornerstones, the pillars of their now ending reign. And these cornerstones are visible now. And the United Nations does no longer serve its purpose of keeping the people comfortably numb. And once again, the synchronicity of events is astonishing. In my criminal proceeding, new evidence has surfaced, irrefutable documentary evidence that shows that the criminal allegations against me have absolutely no basis whatsoever, but were staged by the rogue German Inland Intelligence Service, which is used by the current puppet administration's interior secretary to go after anyone who is not in line with the government's official narrative. It is now clear that the only purpose of this trial is to distract the public's attention, the international public's atten attention, uh, from the fact that the real reason for my kidnapping from Mexico, putting me on trial and keeping me in pre-trial custody for almost a year now, is my work on the corona pandemic. Well, why am I saying this? We have a smoking gun. And the smoking gun we found is one of the binders in one of the binders we received from the prosecution, there is a piece of paper. Unlike all the other binders, this one does not only contain copies of the prosecution's file, rather the first page isn't really a first page, it's not even a copy of a first page, it's a photograph of the very first, well, piece of paper in that file. But it's it's not really a page. It is a little plastic bag containing a police case number, a, a piece of paper with a police case number and the word Corona on it. Corona, not embezzlement, theft, or violation of a fiduciary duty or any other crime, but Corona. 
Now, corona is obviously not a crime, unless, of course, you follow up on the evidence that we dug up on the pandemic. Now, that's a crime, a pandemic, a planned pandemic. What this word means, this word is the introduction to the entire investigation of the police. What this word means is that just as spelled out in the infamous dossier about me, the real reason for staging a criminal in investigation against me is my work. My work of exposing corona as a staged pandemic and our intent to use the information that we found as evidence in international trial to bring those to justice who are responsible. This alone explains my kidnapping from Mexico and its cover-up as a fake deportation. And this alone explains the courts and the uh, prosecution's blatant acts of criminal obstruction of justice. They're almost death desperate attempt to hide the truth, to keep the truth from coming out. But there's more. We now found additional documents describing the fake deportation, not as a deportation, but all of a sudden as an extradition, which of course it wasn't. That's fake too. And we found documentary evidence showing an experienced Berlin DA's, uh, DA refusing refusing to take the case and start an, an, a criminal investigation uh, against me because he finds that the allegations are neither, uh, can neither be qualified as a felony nor as a serious misdemeanor. And we found that the original DA, another senior DA in Göttingen, who had refused to even open a criminal investigation at, against me because she couldn't find any signs of criminal activity, was deliberately bypassed when the intelligence service tried for a second time to take me down. For that purpose, they had a young and inexperienced assistant DA transferred from Hanover to Göttingen so that he would do their bidding and follow their orders. And so that the um, originally um, acting senior district attorney would not throw the non-case out for a second time. Now, at the same time that these documents have surfaced, um, a brand new, highly disturbing documentary film on who and what is behind the genocide in Gaza, the occupied West Bank, and now Lebanon, produced by TRT, was shown on TRT. And another documentary and an excellent interview with a Jewish American appeared, which explains who runs the show in the United States and by extension in the EU. In the EU, where the German government is now collapsing, Macron is completely isolated and Keir Starmer, who is a newly elected prime minister, is already deeply unpopular and embroiled in a bribery scandal. Now I realize, of course, that TRT2 is a mainstream news channel and that it too espouses the narrative of man-made climate panic and virus panic. But as far as this Gaza story is concerned, they're the only mainstream TV station that actually have reporters on the ground and that broadcast continuous live coverage of what's really going on there, the full extent of the carnage, which is um, something all the other mainstream media and Western, Western politicians have been desperately trying to hide from the public until now. But that dam is breaking too now. And this will have huge implications for the so-called Western world. Now my case is turning into a real crime story now, only not quite the way that they intended. At the same time, the other crime story is also unfolding. So what happens in my case happens simultaneously with what's happening in Gaza, the United Nations, uh, and the EU. 
But I want to avoid confusion. I don't want to conflate the different scenarios with each other. I will therefore start with a statement on my quote unquote case. This first statement will be the centerpiece of my closing argument in roughly three weeks from now, if it ever comes to that. Now, why am I saying this? Um, I'm saying this because there's so much happening right now with Corona um, that might yet stop the other side dead in their tracks. For example, a brand new decision by a court in Germany, which came down on September the 3rd, says that a hospital's decision to shut out a nurse who wanted to come to work because she wasn't vaccinated was illegal. And the court comes to this conclusion based on the newly published RKI files that clearly show that the corona measures were not based on scientific evidence, but on political orders. Orders coming from one of the World Economic Forum's young global leaders in this case. And the decision is also based on new real scientific evidence showing that the shots didn't do what uh, politicians claimed they did. They did not provide the person who got the shots with immunity. Neither did they stop a vaccinated person from infecting others. Now, this first statement on my case quote-unquote case, will then be followed by a statement um, on the incredible events unfolding in Gaza, at the United Nations, and in the EU, with a focus on the impending implosion of first the German puppet government and then the EU. Well, the message I'm trying to say or to send is this. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't trust the cover story behind which the mainstream media and politicians are hiding, hiding the truth. Look behind the cover and decide for yourselves what is true and whom you can believe. And do what you can to spread the truth, the truth that leads to justice and then to peace. Remember Tom Wolfe's best-selling book, Bonfire of the Vanities? Well, this book is based on facts. Facts that are now playing out right before our eyes in real time. We'll see you soon.